If you're a fishing enthusiast, get yourself to the Kimberleys as it offers some of Australia's best sports fishing, with barramundi being high on the list of targeted fish. There's plenty of options available. You can helicopter into a remote fishing camp, go on a charter or do your own self-drive trip. But keep watching and I'll show you what's available. Last week we set up a base camp here at Walsh Point on the edge of Port Warranda. 53 kilometres by road, north of the Mitchell Falls Mertens camping area. This is Woonambool Gambara country, so visitor access is available to holders of a current UVP, which grants permission to traverse and stay on land west of the King Edward River crossing. Contact Woonambool Gambara Aboriginal Corporation based in Kalumbaru and they will be happy to organise your pass. One of the great things of travelling up to the Kimberleys just after the wet season is that you can see a sight like that, a beautiful waterfall thundering down into the ocean. We're out on the boat today, it's a glorious day and I just wanted to take a moment to talk about communications. I've got a handheld VHF radio here which you shouldn't travel without up here. Now there's people here that work this area and stay at the fishing camps and they monitor different channels and if you get into trouble you can give them a call and they'll help you out as best they can. Now I do have a hardwired unit in my console but this is a great backup. It's splash proof and it's sturdy as well. So get yourself one before you come on the trip and also check out the local channels that are used in the area. Approximately 8 kilometres east of Walsh Point is the hidden oasis of Kimberley Coastal Camp. The owners have invited us across to check out their retreat. Even when you arrive at Kimberley Coastal Camp, the welcoming party is pretty darn unique. It's a carpet shark and he's sitting there ever so patiently. Nestled on the banks of Port Warrender and opposite Walsh's Point, you'll come across Kimberley Coastal Camp. Now this place is exquisite. They specialise in bringing your adventurous spirit to life. Whatever your dreams may be, you can do helicopter rides here, go and see some sensational rock art, do some amazing fishing, pull in that barrier you've always wanted to, or just relax by the pool. There is so much on offer here. Now as soon as I finish my cool drink, I'll take you guys on a little tour. This boutique camp caters for 16 people, so you're very well looked after here. The villas are stunning, and with a view like that behind me, you feel like you're on a movie set. This is definitely bucket list material, guys. The unique facilities here have been handcrafted into the landscape and it all adds to the atmosphere of a very special spot. Many places actually close down for the wet season, but not Kimberley Coastal Camp. They're open to guests year round. Now if you would like to experience a true wet season, book a stay here and take a helicopter flight and go over the waterfalls when they're in full force with the floodwaters coming down. Now the owners here, Tubbs and Jules, they make you feel so welcome, like you're part of the Kimberley family. The food here is also exquisite, and you've even got a swimming pool you can take a dip in. <laughs> now that we've spent some time here, Jim Bob, and experienced this place, what's your thoughts? This is truly a boutique eco camp. The fact that there's a swimming pool here Western Australia has got so much beautiful water in it, but we don't get to enjoy it because of the high population of crocodiles. So the fact you can have a swim while you're relaxing, amazing. And speaking of relaxing, Jim Bob, I don't know about you, but as soon as I set foot on this place, you just feel the stress melt away. It is so relaxing. It's beautiful, isn't it? And the thing is too, there's so many options to be able to get here. You can either take a seaplane, charter a helicopter, or even bring your own boat in from Walsh's Point like we did. 
And speaking of Walsh's Point, our camp is over there and those tracks are calling us, those four wheel drive tracks, what do you reckon? There is a lot of waterfalls we need to see and some tracks to hit, so let's go. Get in that boat and uh, chuff off, I think it's your turn to motor back. I'm pretty sure it's your turn to no, get the boat. I was just going to sit back here and relax. And you were saying the other day that you're the better driver anyway, so... Yeah, I am. So that's why I thought a bit more practice for you wouldn't go astray. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it is. Drinks, please. If you've packed a fishing rod in or you've got a tinny topper on your roof, then Walsh's Point is a good spot to stop and drop a line. You can catch queenfish, barramundi, cod and finger mark here. There's quite a variety of species to target. The camping area is not huge, but there is a toilet there. Bring your bug spray though, because there's a few sandflies. But what's a few sandflies when it's good fishing? I think it's worth the while. Up in front we've got a couple of hill climbs to negotiate that are a bit scratchy, but ultimately we're heading for Columbaroo. Not too bad. I feel like I'm driving like a nana, but I just got to go so easy for the boat. I don't want to bash that thing to pieces, but tell you what, it has been a true asset these last few days, burning out fishing. Man, it's been fun. Nothing like that feeling when you get that bite and you just give it a little tug and then bang, you're on. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. I love it. It's going around the bypass of another boogie section that someone has very kindly put a track in here for other travellers so you don't have to go through too much mud. Here we go. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go get a diff lockers. And I'm just going to stick to the ruts. Here we go, just dropping into it now. Oh, geez, it's sloppy. <laughs> you still get a bit of bounce in those first two dugout holes on that side, Jim Bob, but it's still nice and firm on the bottom, so I was just in second gear and cruised through. Yeah, cool. Thanks, mate. Good to know. Right, I'll bring it on through. Helps if you take the handbrake off. <laughs> First day driving, you know. <laughs> Rookie error. Don't tell Penny, she'll laugh at me. Too easy, Penzo. It was a bit more chopped up since last time we went through, but a few cars have been through since then. A bit sad to see the water beside me, Jim Bob, and weaving out of this track, leaving Walsh's Point behind. Yeah, I know, I was feeling the same thing this morning, but you know what, that's all part of going on with adventure. You can't stay stuck in the same spot whilst foot was sensational. I'm sure we got some more beautiful places up ahead, mate. True that, there's more adventures to come. Loving the way the car's handling. Just thinking that, the suspension's all working really nice. The shock absorbers are all taking it all really well. The car's sitting really level through all this articulation, even with the big weight of the trailer on the back. My Foam Cell Pro shock absorbers just keep performing. It's not uncommon for us to run our vehicles up to nine hours a day on this type of rocky terrain, stretching their legs in deep washouts and climbing steep hills. And the Foam Cell Pros just keep giving. And the bonus is that they improve the ride quality to no end. You can actually install them, take your old factory ones out, put a set of foam cells in, take them for a test drive, and you'll be surprised at the difference. And that's what you want when you're touring. You want comfort. Those foam cell pros are just so reliable. Breaks the door. Hey Penzo, I think I've lost my brakes, mate. Penzo lost your brakes. Yeah, 
Yeah, my pedal's gone. Oh, yes, mate. Oh, all right, I'll, I'm just not too far behind you. I'll be with you in a sec. Hello there. You wouldn't happen to have <laughs> a, a little bit of brake line on you by any chance, would you? Well, I do, but it's in use. Ah, well, that's all right. <laughs> I'll take yours. <laughs> Yeah, I've sprung a leak, mate. Alrighty, I'll um, pull up and see what we can work out. Yep, cool. Too easy. To help with the repair, I'm actually going to use a nail file so the guys can mark the brake line to see where it's bleeding out, and that way we can solder it up, hopefully. Fingers crossed. With the paint filed off the pot, the crack is a lot easier to see. Uh, it's not ADR approved, but I've had that work in the past on your old patrol actually. Mm. So, try it, put some pressure on it, put him in, put some pressure on it. I always carry a bottle of brake fluid with me when I travel, but over the years I've seen others who have been desperate, they haven't had any of this on board, so they've used oil, like, and it's not recommended to use any petroleum-based oil because what will happen, it'll swell all the O-rings in your brake calipers and do a lot of damage in there. So if you are in a fix, one of the only things pretty much that you can use is water. So we always have that on board, don't we? So use that instead of petroleum-based oils and it'll get you out of trouble at least until the next town. All good. You beauty. Just packed all the tools up. Penzo, don't forget your nail file. <laughs> Thanks, I don't know if I want it back. Yeah, look, there's a corner on the end there. You can still use it. <laughs> You're a shocker. And we're the, the good cleaner. Beauty. It's been nice a exfoliating hand cleaner. <laughs> bit of a messy job, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. At least it's holding pressure, okay? Yeah. Travelling so soon after the wet season, at some stage you're bound to come across a muddy section of track. And that's exactly what I've got in front of me at the moment. I've got this long stretch that's got some really deep trenches in it. I've walked it and it seems reasonably hard. The, the softer sections is where the water's sitting. So I'm going to put it in a four high, just first gear, and just try and stay on the, the hard part of the track and get this camper through unscathed. It's dropping in now. Oh yeah, it's soft. What is it going? <laughs> okay, got one more deep section coming up. This is really wild. Here we go. We're into it now. Just trying to hang on to it. Oh, just trying to see what's going on. Get my wipers going more. <laughs> Rush. Okay, Penzo, I'll come on through. So we found a bit of mud on the road here. Penny's gotten through, no worries. So I'll follow her through and see if I can make it. She's a little bit slippy. Not too bad, a bit slidey. Truck's nice and dirty now though. <laughs> Woo! Nailed it. It's gonna slow down for some big ruts in the road here. The Columbaroo track can be quite diverse. It's got long muddy straights and other times you'll be slowing down for the erosion in the road and it gets quite rocky. Now before you come up this way, just check with the local council to make sure the roads are open because you don't want to get up here and discover that they're still closed. 
but if that does happen there's always an alternative route or another location that you can go and check out instead. It's taken us well over four hours to reach Columba Roo. It's pretty slow going on that track. We've gone through town and we're heading straight for Honeymoon Bay as it's getting late in the day. We're going to set up a base camp there and then we'll explore what the area has to offer. Honeymoon Bay is situated 27 kilometres northeast of Columba Roo on Napier Broom Bay. Set in the low hills overlooking the crystal waters, owners Les and Joy French welcome visitors to what I feel is one of the best beach camps in the Kimberleys. This is a very popular spot for boaties with safe anchorage directly in front of camp and access to a boat ramp is less than five minutes away. My plan is to go exploring the coast from this point, but a strong high sitting in the Great Australian Bight is causing a fresh southeasterly wind up here, so looking for a protected spot to fish until that dies down is the best course of action at the moment. It's a little bit windy today, we're tucked around a headland, but it's still blowing a gale. But We've managed to pick a site here, we're on the top of a bommy and there seems to be fish here. Jimmy just pulled up a couple of nice keepers, so I'm going to bait up and go down. Is this your way of slowing me down by chopping the bait up really small? So I've got to like take ages to thread tiny little bits on? That's it. Knew it. <laughs> we're going to ride. <laughs> it is. He's a good size, whatever he is. I'll try and get him. He's a oh, good one. Smokes. He's a good one, Jim. Oh, my leg's shaking from pulling it in. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I actually thought I had another GT because they travel in schools and Jimmy just pulled up one. That guy put some hurt on me. It's even bigger than my last one. I am absolutely pumped right now. Oh. All right, I'll get that hook out of him. He's saying 12 kilos. Woohoo! That's am, just over 12 kilos. I am very happy with that. <laughs> Good job, bud. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> you, without a doubt, are the cod whisperer. I know. <laughs> well, I'm all over it, mate. Yeah. As the tide rose, the fish came on hard. Oh wow, oh my goodness, that's a horse, <laughs> oh, and I want as well. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, Jimmy, I've got two on the line and they're all following their mates up. <laughs> it's they're awesome. out of control. <laughs> Holy <laughs> big fish back there. It's like we've Look at the size of him. The jackpot. They're both massive. Good job, oh, man. Your arms must be pumping. Yes! <laughs> oh, I haven't had a day like this fishing for such a long time. I mean, look at that. They are amazing, bud. <laughs> Get a photo of those Absolutely. bad boys. Absolutely. We're using circle hooks here today. They're a little bit different. You actually have to resist the urge to yank the rod. You actually let them run with a little bit and that's when it pulls in on their mouth there. But I'll give you a look at this guy. So let this guy go back for a swim, Pam. Yeah, put him back, mate. All right. We'll let him go. He was a nice little catch. See you soon, buddy. Good keeper there, Pam. Yeah, mate. We call these nana guy over on the east coast of Australia. But here, they call them swallowtail. Whatever the name, they're a magnificent fish. Is it lunchtime yet? After all this <laughs> catching fish, I'm getting pretty hungry. A bit peckish, mate. Yeah. yeah, go for it. Time for my wrap I prepared earlier. <laughs> Don't you just love having a fridge on board? I do. Icy cold water, 
Made me wrap this morning, it's nice and cool, ready to eat. Bit of whole grain wrap, I'm getting pretty healthy. They're so healthy these days. A little bit of bacon and eggs on there. It's gonna say you'll be vegan next, but... <laughs> no, well, not quite. <laughs> oh yeah. Good gear. I mean, it'd be better if there was fish on there. <laughs> get, out, get out of me way, I'm still <laughs> fishing. Who's got time to eat, seriously? Stuff my wrap, got a fish on. Is a good size. Mate, you're out of control, Penzo. No time for lunch. There's fish catching going on. This guy here is the perfect size for a recipe I've got. The fridge battery was starting to run a little bit low, so we just whipped out the solar panel in the centre of the boat here, and it's pumping in, yeah, well over three amps. It's crazy, you can be fishing and still cranking the amps. How good is that? So good. Go so anywhere, good. solar panels. And it, and it folds down and just sits in the waterproof case. Nice one, Jimbo. Keep those wraps cold. <laughs> Nothing worse than a lukewarm wrap, bud. With the tide dropping, it's time to chase pelagics. Really see the fish through the water. Get out of town. Get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Double hook up. I was just pulling my little water. Ah, uh, mate, I'll drop mine. Oh, here you go. Take this one, mate. I've got the last two. Yeah, right. I'll bring this in. I'll swap. Oh, no, it's still on. He's there. He's just having a little rest. Oh. Queenfish school up and oh. moving large packs up here. Got a little line then. Got a little line. He's taking it again. Jeez, these guys put up a good fight. <laughs> Gotta love that sound. Uh, Unyelly cactus. <laughs> He's just out there. Bringing him in close now. There we go. Let's try and grab him. Oh. Got it. It's not every day you get a rod back that's gone over the side. Wait, I thought we were going to lose you over the side. Did you nearly <laughs> jump in to save my rod? Pretty much. <laughs> Champion. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Anything for you. She knows it's my favourite rod. <laughs> Lost the lure, but I have the rod. <laughs> all good, all good. I can buy a lure anytime. <laughs> mate. That's some action on the water, isn't it? Ah, oh, yeah, it's hectic. Trying to get everything <laughs> happening at once is, is quite crazy. Just bring him home, mate. Time for some redemption. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think this guy's wearing out as much as I am. I just right, don't eh? know that I can grab his towel. You mind sorting him? Yeah, mate, bring him back. <laughs> He's sticking to my finger. <laughs> He's stuck to my... Oh, well, you keep it then. <laughs> Another good size queen fish and a little remora stuck was on him. <laughs> That's how they stick to the, the side of the fish. Uh, that was a good fight, Jim Bob. Thanks for helping me. I find the sides on this boat are quite high because I'm so short. I can't quite reach over and get the tail of the queen fish. So Jim Bob's been a champ and getting the tail, <laughs> even though I nearly lost his fishing rod before. He's forgiven me, haven't you? Yeah, mate. Yeah. mate it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Send these guys back, hey? Rattle. Well, that turned into an awesome day on the water. The occasional mechanical failure is inevitable on these types of trips, but finding a way to fix it and continuing on always proves worthwhile. We enjoyed our stay at Kimberley Coastal Camp where it's glamping all the way. We said goodbye to Walsh's Point and hit the tracks to Columbaroo. The fishing here has been off the charts but there's actually a few locations that are just opening up to tourism. I'll show you those next week, and thanks for watching, guys. This is Top of Down Under, and travel safe.